Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested.com here at CES 2016. And in this 3D printing pavilion, we found a really interesting rapid prototyping machine from MCOR. Now, Connor McCormick, you're the CEO of MCOR. We've seen your previous machines, the large one, and it's a, it's a, it doesn't use plastic filament, melted plastic, it uses paper to create sculptural models. What's the new machine? What's the arc? Yeah, so as you said, Norman, it's a very different technology than all the other machines that are out here. We just use regular paper. And that's the big differentiator. Paper goes into the machine, it prints out in full color. So the combination of paper, full color ink, you have a very low cost part, very environmentally friendly, and just like a really kind of different, different object that adds to add here. Can we talk about that process, what happens from modeling to printing? So if I'm a 3D modeler and I work with, for example, a STL file, uh, previously those files, they don't have any texture, they don't have any a color. So you're imp importing new models now that have that ma texture map on top? Yes, yeah, so as you said, SDL is, is white. I mean, you don't get anything on the, on the files. So we use OBJ or rear ML files. So artists are creative professionals, as we call them. Think of the guys who use Adobe, Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, these kind of people. They've been wanting to use 3D printing in the past, but we feel that they haven't been able to do that because the color quality hasn't been there. And especially in the desktop space, there is no color version of anything. So this is the new machine. So people might know us for the MCOR Iris, which is the industrial printer, but we launched here at CES 16, the new version, which is called the MCOR Arc. Uh, for people who are interested, the name Arc in Greek mythology is the sister of Iris. So it's a kind of a sister machine to the industrial printer. But really, this is, this is groundbreaking for, we believe, for the industry, but also for MCOR. It's a very big departure for us. In terms of the detail of the model, uh, what's going on is you have paper. This is just off-the-shelf office paper you can buy. Um, the thickness of a piece of paper is about 100 microns. So that's like the thickness of your model. But there's also the resolution of the ink. So is this just regular paper and also who makes the ink cartridges? Yeah, so it's a little bit different from that. From So our industrial printer was regular sheets of paper. But this machine is a little deviation from that. So the big difference on this machine, not only is the price point, which I'll come to later on, but the big technical difference is that we have a fully integrated 2D printhead. So in the prior machine, we would pre-print the sheets, take those sheets and feed them into the 3D printer. But in this machine, we actually print the ink after in line. So you feed the white paper in, and then you put your ink down on top of the bill. There's lots of advantages of doing that. You don't have to worry about page placement. You don't have to worry about image alignment. It's all done after the layer is stuck down. And then you put down your ink on top of the bill. So our image quality, DPI-wise, is one and a half times higher than the iris. But there's an interesting thing. Because the, the images are perfectly aligned, your eye perceives the objects as being a much higher color quality. Let's look at, look at a model here. This is a really large model. It's representative of maybe one of the larger pieces you can print here. It's full color, of course. You see the tattoos. How much is the ink? How deep is it going inside each layer? Yeah, so we only put down the ink where you actually need to see it. So if you're printed this model this way, when you come to near these end layers, you'd nearly see a lot of that tattoo. But if you're printing it this way, you'd only see it around the cut pattern. So we don't put ink on the inside of the body if it's not needed. You only place it where you see it. So we're very economic with the ink. And when you see the machines running here on the booth, it looks like we're putting down a big band of ink. We've actually increased the band just to show people that ink is coming out of the machine. We actually reduced the band down to around 0.3 of a millimeter, 300 microns, because we're so precise, because the inking and the cutting is all done now from the same print bar. It's done from the same reference plane, so we can have the ink and the image and the knife really, really tightly, tightly lined. Talk about the knife system. On the iris, as I recall, when you print an object, you kind of unveil it. You get this block of paper and you break off chunks yeah. almost, and the sculpture comes out of that. Is that the same process as here? Yeah, it's very similar, but I mean, there's some really cool differences from this and anything else. So the first thing here, I'll just show you on the side, is that it, it doesn't run on sheets of paper anymore. It runs on roll of paper. So, so here you can see on the side, so you drop in your roll of paper. And you know, we tasked the engineering team, how can you make a paper feed system that's reliable, that never fails? And when you think about it, you see it every day. When you go to your Starbucks and you get your coffee, the point of sale system where the receipt spits out, that's exactly what this is like. You roll, this just think of a big receipt machine. You roll in your roll of paper, you lock it in. So we have these little sprockets or spikes that fit into these holes in the paper. When that's locked over like this, that's it. 
it feeds all the time, it's a never fail. So when that feeds in, you know, we have a very robust system. So between the paper roll, the integrated printhead, there's some of the really, really cool new features. The other thing about this machine is that we have a new adhesive uh, system, so we, we stick the layers together, um, but we've added a new axis, a new theta axis, actually onto the glue system. So people who are familiar with the iris, the iris ran on a raster system, straight lines, but this is a vector system, so we can actually follow any contour. So that means we have up to four times faster machine than the iris, but also we can put down more adhesive on a very thin wall. So we can, we can make more complex objects, but it's the same uh, process as you mentioned, you, you unveil the waste material, but there's one big difference that people will notice. Because we're using a roll of paper, so this is the feed side, so if I can go over here to the other side of the machine. So this is the feed side, but this is the waste side. So this actually takes away the waste. So you can have an adaptive build. So the volume here that you're printing actually adjusts to the model that you're making. So it takes away, if you're making just a small object, it takes away the majority of the waste. Whereas on the, on the other machines, you might have a big block to expose a small part in the middle. Now we have an adaptive build, which gives us a lot of speed up, but it also means that the user doesn't have to spend a lot of time weeding, taking away the waste material. So a lot of, lot of very big key features in this new printer. And how big can you actually make objects? What's the volume capacity the for, volume the, for the build capacity, platform? It's very similar to, it's a little bit smaller than the Iris. Uh, we had to make a little bit of a change to make this happen to get the machine down a small size. But it's, it's just around, in, in metric sizes, it's, it's on our five liters. Just, just about five liter in print volume. Another nice thing you might notice here, this isn't just like a cool feature. Um, so we have, you know, the, the regular touchscreen that you would have, high res touchscreen. But this is a functional uh, progress bar. So on the other machines that's running over here, you can see that there's a green progress bar that kind of progresses along. It tells you from a distance. So you imagine you're in a lecture situation, you're a teacher, you have a farm of these machines. Otherwise, you have to go up and look at the screen here, interrogate each machine to see what the progress is. From a distance, you can actually tell how each machine is behaving. If it needs assistance, it'll go amber. If it has a problem, it'll go red. So we've kind of nice, nice new features. And the last thing is that of all the technologies, you know, 3D printers are all about customization, yet the, the, the least customizable thing is the actual printer itself. So this new printer comes in a selection of different skins. So this is a brushed steel look. We have a, a black and white carbon fiber and also a wood type finish. So you can select what finish you want. And in time, we would like the users to be able to select, even upload their own images and get a kind of their own personalized wrap on each of the printers. Looking at these finished models, some of these are quite beautiful. Is there any finish on top of here or is this exactly how it comes out? Is there coating uh, on top? You can, if you think of paper more like a scaffold, uh, paper has around 70% air. So if you want to make the parts really, 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 really tough and durable, like this hammer here, this actually will hammer a nail into a piece of wood because you impregnate it with a resin and when the resin cures, it takes on the property of that resin. So straight out of the machine, they're completely eco-friendly, biodegradable, but if you want to put something really, really hard on it to make it like a hammer, then you'll have to look at what the material properties. But if you look at it more like a scaffold, and then you can do a lot of different things. We have a flexible object as well, an M-Core flex material, and when it, when it cures, it gets really, really flexible. So you can actually have parts, you tie a knot in it, and you can flex them over back, all, all made out of paper. Love it. It's wood that's turned to pulp, turned to paper, then relayered and glued together, and turned into something that looks just like wood. Yes. That's what the M-Core Arc can do. And how much is this, and when it will be available? So this machine is available in Q2 this year, and it's $8,995. For educators and, and, and prototypers and... Yeah. and well, we really, we, we feel that uh, a big... Uh, area for us would be education, especially in the university sector, uh, and also there's a new area of creative professionals that we're kind of targeting with this new printer. So it is a premium product, but it is the only full color desktop printer in the market. And you know, it is a professional grade machine. Our industrial printer has been selling there for the last 10 years. We're a 10 year old company. And then we've brought that to the, to, to the desktop, desktop space. So we're very, very excited about this, about this new machine. Thank you so much, Connor, for showing us the MCOR ARC and uh, we'll have more from CES 2016 on Tested. Until next time, I'm Norm. Bye.